So the Bengals get a little revenge for opening day as they come to Pittsburgh and beat the Steelers. We kind of talked about this last night, didn't we? Okay, we didn't care what it looked like. We just wanted this feeling in this locker room after the game. Playoff football, all these games matter. They're going to matter in the standings down the road, and so we got to go out and, and play our best ball at the right time. Come on. Y'all know what we got to do, dog. Come on. We got one job, that's to win. As the holiday season is upon us, there is a lot to be thankful for, with a win in Pittsburgh being top of the list. Welcome in to Bengals Weekly, I'm Marissa Contepelli. Fresh off the victory in the Steel City, the Bengals are on the road again this week, but this time they'll look to dethrone the king in the Music City. But before we get to kickoff in Nashville, Mike was on the mic in Pittsburgh, and we'll take you down to field level to listen in. Charles Davis joins the show to preview last year's divisional matchup. And on Countdown, I'll tell you just how dominant Trey Hendrickson has been on the line. But first, he became the first Bengals running back to ever record three receiving touchdowns in a single game, as Samaj P. Ryan stepped up when his number was called. We now go behind the stripes with the Bengals running back. Samaj is just one, obviously he's a great player steps up whenever his opportunity presents itself. And two, he's you know, one of those locker room guys that, that everybody talks about. Great in the locker room, great guy to talk to, culture builder, he's fun to play with. Burrow back to throw, screen pass, Piran with blockers in front, he's at the 20, Get toward it. the sideline, Get 15, it. 10, <laughs> 5, touchdown, <laughs> Bengals, Samaj Piran. We always talk about, you know, take care of the little things and the big things take care of itself. Take care of Burrow, take care of, you know, whoever we need to take care of. And then when it's our turn to make plays, you know, we just we make them count. There's no conversation. You know, we know that one guy goes down, the other guy has to come in and do just as good, if not better, as the first guy. So just another opportunity. He's probably the most selfless guy in that locker room. He's a great teammate. He doesn't care about any recognition and scoring touchdowns. He just wants to go out and do his job. He's consistent. He's not going to say much. He'll crack a smile every now and then. He's, he's a hard worker. He doesn't ask for pass on the bed, doesn't ask for praise. Don't play, you know, all that much, but when I do, I have to make it count. You know, just try to make one play after another, and um, it turned out in our favor. As a collective group, this staff is probably the best that I've been a part of. They don't just care about you know what you do on the field. They actually care about you as a human being, and I feel like that goes a long ways with Justin. You know, he's just one of us. He's just one of the guys, so we can just go in and you know have hard to hard conversations, and you know it just feels natural. And I feel like you don't get that everywhere. So it's a it's a special group. They're good dudes. They, they are. They really are. They're good guys. I think they take a lot of pride in just our position room as a whole. I think they take great pride in that. They got great chemistry, and it's a, it's a great, great room to be a part of. They understand that it's going to take everybody in the room, whether it's Joe, Travion, Chris, Samaje, whoever it is. They know when one of us does well, that reflects the rest of us as well, too. So when you have a, a locker room like that, the sky's the limit. And then with three touchdowns, Samaje P. Ryan. You just have to remember that at any given moment, this could be taken away. When your opportunity comes, you have to make the most of it. When you make the most of it, you have to keep continue to do that. You know, it just can't be a one-time thing. It has to be over and over and over and over again. Great day for ball. Don't get no better than this. As long as we win, I don't care who gets the credit for it. Just doing whatever I could to help the team win. He's as steady as they come. He's the same every day. He's consistent. He's a great teammate. He doesn't care what his role is and how many times you call his name. He's just going to step up and do his job. That's what makes him unique. He doesn't care about anything else except just doing his job at a high level and making sure his teammates can count on him.
Joe Burrow and Samaj P. Ryan were better together in the Bengals' win over the Steelers. It was a day of records as Joe Burrow eclipsed 10,000 career passing yards, tied for third fastest in NFL history. And Samaj P. Ryan became the first running back in Bengals history with three receiving touchdowns in a single game. Looking for his third. Get in. Touchdown catch. Yeah. Runs yeah. over the pylon. Yes. Touchdown. <laughs> Bengals. Oh. Samaj P. Ryan with a three touchdown catch game. P. Ryan was clutch for Burrow, catching every one of his targets on Sunday, logging a career high 52 receiving yards as the 355 passing yards for Burrow is his second highest game yardage on the season. Joe Burrow and Samaj P. Ryan are better together. Brought to you by Fifth Third Bank. Oh, yeah! Yeah! I don't know what, I don't know what it is about Maj and screens. Well, he gets some screens, he's yeah. But I'm like... <laughs> That's right, we had Mike on the mic in Pittsburgh. And when we return, we'll take you down to field level to listen in. Bengals Weekly is brought to you by Paycor, proud to be the official HR software provider of the Cincinnati Bengals. And Kettering Health, the official healthcare provider of the Cincinnati Bengals. A trip to Pittsburgh meant we had to throw a mic on former Steeler Mike Hilton. And as usual, he didn't disappoint. Let's head down to field level to take it all in. Ah! Oh, good, man. Hey, you look at hey. Something right. I need a helmet at the end. Something right. <laughs> you missed the finger? I, mean, man, I, I almost called you. I had 30 the day after. I almost called you. Say, you know I wouldn't miss it. I already got it. I love you, man. Let's go. Let's get it. Hey, y'all know where we at. AFC North Ball on a beautiful Sunday, man. Bengals victory on the way. Y'all stay tuned. Yeah, we gotta go. <laughs> yes, sir. what I say? Hey, that's a little more juice. That's a little more juice. The snap, the put down. The right-footed kick. It's oh, on yeah. its way. And it is good. That win is scaring that. Yeah, Trey! Own it! Hell yeah, Trey! Burrow back to throw. Screen pass. P Ryan with blockers in front. He's at the 20. Get toward it. the sideline. Get 15, in. 10, <laughs> 5. Touchdown! Oh! Yeah! Yeah! I don't know what I don't know what it is about my and screens. Well, he gets some screens. He's yeah. But I'm like, <laughs> that's a great play call. The good thing about this game, Cam. You mess up once, you got another opportunity to do it. Yes, slow. Come on now. And you know we ride with you, so don't ever, don't ever worry about that, bro. That's too easy, 30. Burrow rolls to the right, throws into the end zone. Boom. It is caught yeah. for the touchdown. Yes. Yes, sir, T.I. Yeah. I'm happy for my dog, T.I., man. He deserves it. He deserves it. He deserves it. If anybody, if anybody deserves it, he deserves it. On the sidelines, let chill out. I'm talking about on the field action, baby. Hands it off to P. Ryan, and Zabaje appears to have the first down. First, first, move him, move him down, Jay. Move him down, Jay. <laughs> move him, Jay. I wasn't throwing it right. I was ready for it. Come on, little push on me. You know I'm gonna bet now. I know it, baby. Dots, I know it when you got. Big Dot, I know it when you got. Oh, okay. Hey. Proud of you, boy. Appreciate it. Keep going, one game at a time. Get better, better. Yes, sir. Mike Hilton is the last line of defense in the victory formation against his former team. <laughs> When their number was called, they stepped up, as Samaj P. Ryan and Trenton Irwin came up big for the Bengals against the Steelers. Let's send it over to Dan, Dave, and Jeff as the trio takes a trip down memory lane. 
The most touchdown catches that Isaac Curtis, Chad Johnson, and A.J. Green ever had in a Bengals uniform was three. That's how many Samaj P. Ryan had last week against the Pittsburgh Steelers. It was amazing. And that inspired this topic for our Who Day conversation, the most unlikely heroes in Bengals history. Butch, you're up first. I'm going to start with a wave of wire pickup. Jeff Blake didn't play for 10 weeks because he was a third string quarterback. But in 1994, had to be shoved into the starting lineup against the defending Super Bowl champion Cowboys. Blake comes on, throws touchdown passes of 67 and 55 yards. They don't win that game, but it sparks a movement. They win the next two games, and he throws for 387 and 355 yards. Three games when Jeff Blake took over to town. A waiver wire pickup. Went from the waiver wire to Waikiki to the Pro Bowl the next year. All right, Lap, you're up next. Dan, I'm going back in the way back machine to September 6th of 1981. Season opener was not a beautiful start to the football game for Kenny Anderson. Forrest Gregg said, not your day, Kenny. Pulls him and puts in Turk Shonet. He comes into the huddle. He looks at all of us. He goes, Ben, we're going to win this football game. We're down 21 zip in the first quarter. I'm thinking, let's get a first down. Come back and win that football game 27-21 behind Turk Shonet. His arm, his feet, and his attitude, his mind. Learned a big lesson that day. Everybody did. All right. My unsung hero is Boomer Esiason. And I know what people are thinking. The guy was the MVP in 1988. How can he be an unsung hero? Well, I'm not talking about that, Boomer. I'm talking about 36-year-old Boomer Esiason in 1997. That year, he came back to Cincinnati after being gone for four seasons to back up Jeff Blake. It's a tough year for the Bengals. They had a seven-game losing streak. So with five games to go, Bruce Coslett puts Boomer back in the starting lineup. And he was even better statistically than he was in his MVP season. In the last five games, 11 touchdown passes, only two interceptions. The Bengals averaged more than 30 points a game. And the final pass of his career was a 77-yard touchdown to Darnay Scott. It was a storybook finish for a Bengals all-time great. Blake, Turk, and Boomer, three unsung heroes in this Who Day Conversation. It's a rematch of last year's divisional round game. When we return, we preview Bengals versus Titans. Bengals Weekly is brought to you by Fifth Third Bank, the official bank of the Cincinnati Bengals, and your local Kia dealers. Visit Kia.com to discover movement that inspires. The last time the Bengals were in Tennessee, they earned their first road playoff game in franchise history. Now it's not January, but the game on Sunday still has that same playoff type feel. Charles Davis will be on the call, and he now joins Dan Horde. Ian Eagle and Charles Davis will be in the booth for CBS this week, and the former Tennessee safety joins us now. Charles, you had the Bengals Steelers back in week one. You also had the Bengals Jets game, but I want to go back to that first game. What did you think of the Bengals when you walked out of the booth at Paycor Stadium that day? I went into that game, wow, I can't wait to see this Bengals offensive line, and they struggled. But fast forward to just last week, and you've seen an offensive line now that's had time on task. Every guy has made every start. You don't get that in the league very often now because of injuries and all that. And boy, did it show up against Pittsburgh last week. Seven, if you just want to boil it down to one stat, seven sacks and given up in the first game, two in the second game. So how good is the group 10 games in? Middle of the pack, top third, not near the bottom. What do you think of the offensive line? Definitely top third hmm. and, and trending upwards, getting better. You know, they, they've hit their stride now to where they go into it and they're not having to account for each other as much as believe in each other. Joe Burrow, look, when you can protect him, look out. How good are the Bengals right now? Bengals got to earn their way, okay? Because there are no soft touches for the Bengals all the way out the rest of the season. But at the same time, everyone who plays them is feeling like, oh boy, got to get ready for this squad. Cincinnati six and four and in second place in their division. There's a case that can be made that that's the team you don't want to deal with. That's where I think Cincinnati is right now. 
So the Bengals went there in the playoffs last year, knocked off the Titans when they were the number one seed in the AFC. The fans are going to be salty this Sunday in Nashville. There's no doubt about it. What are a couple of keys for the Bengals to go there and beat them again? Running the football well enough, and that is Joe Burrow flinging it out wide to Higgins, to Boyd, to Hayden Hurst, and just being able to dissect defenses, just giving that little extra count of time in order to get that done. But the big thing is, just like in the playoffs, don't let Henry get going. I think Cincinnati held Tennessee to one of eight, one of 10, one of whatever in the playoffs on third down. That's huge. Absolutely huge. I appreciate your time. Look forward to seeing you this weekend. Can't wait to see you, Dan. I appreciate it. Always fun to do this. And uh, can't wait to see this game. This one's going to be a blast. Every Friday this fall, the Bengals were out at a different high school football game as we have teamed up with Ohio Cat to cheer on local schools. Last month, Hude and the Bengals Stripe Squad were out at Dixie Heights High School as the Colonels hosted the Campbell County Camels. Students and fans had the chance to win great prizes, including passes to attend a closed practice later this season. Rule your school and be on the lookout for Friday Night Stripes as the Bengals and Ohio Cat could be coming to your game next. When we return, I'll tell you how Trey Hendrickson has been one of the best defenders in the league. Stay with us here on Bengals Weekly. Bengals Weekly is brought to you by Alta Fiber, proud to be the official internet provider of the Cincinnati Bengals. And Betfred, the official sports betting partner of the Cincinnati Bengals. Join Dan Horde and Dave Lapham Wednesday nights for the Bengals Game Plan Radio Show Live presented by Bud Light. Visit Bengals.com slash Game Plan for a list of locations each week. The Bengals are saddled up and headed down to the Music City for the first time since that historic playoff win back in January. Now Cincinnati has faced Tennessee the third most times of any opponent, but it's been the matchups as of late that have really ignited a fire within this Bengals team. Jesse Bates kicked off the game picking off Ryan Tannehill on the Bengals' way to knocking off the one-seeded Titans. Since 2010, Cincinnati has won four of the last five against Tennessee, and in three career games against Derrick Henry, the Bengals have held him to an average of 75 yards per outing. With his two sacks on Kenny Pickett, it marked the seventh time in Trey Hendrickson's career where he recorded two or more sacks in a game. Hendrickson's rate of creating pressure and disrupting opposing quarterbacks has been elite. Hendrickson is one of just two players who rank in the top 10 in pressures, get off rate, and raw pressure percentage. Now, Jermaine Pratt has quietly put together one of his best seasons as a pro. Pratt is on pace for career highs in tackles, QB hits, and tackles for loss, as he recorded his top two career PFF grades in the last two games. Pratt's 91.5 grade against Pittsburgh was the fourth highest among all defenders for week 11. Well, since week six, the Bengals offense has been lethal, averaging an AFC high 31.4 points per game, trailing only the Cowboys for the league best. And when they've been in the red zone, they've excelled, converting a touchdown and NFL best 75% of the time. And in the last two games, Bengals running backs have been responsible for eight of the team's 10 touchdowns as Joe Mixon and Samaj P. Ryan each broke a team record in the process. And since the start of 2021, no QB has been better than Joe Burrow when airing it out. Burrow's 22 touchdown passes of 30 or more yards is by far the most in the league and double the amount of Patrick Mahomes, who is third on the list. Joey B's 90.8 PFF grade in week 11 was the highest among all quarterbacks. Shiesty's 93 grade since week seven is the best in the league. Contepelli's Countdown is presented by Betfred. And don't forget to play Ultimate Bengals on the Bengals app for your chance to win amazing prizes, including tickets to Bengals home games. Don't forget to check out Bengals Picks, presented by Ohio Lottery. Now in the Bengals app for your chance to win prizes throughout the season. 18 and over. Terms and conditions may apply. 
It's now time for this week's Kettering Health Fantasy Report. Fresh off his three touchdown day, Samaje Pirine was the top point scorer for the Bengals, passing the 30 point mark and landing as the sixth highest player overall for week 11. T. Higgins logged his second highest total of the season after catching nine targets for 148 yards against the Steelers. Higgins' 23.8 points landed him fourth among all receivers for the week. Thanks for tuning in to Bengals Weekly. Kickoff between the Bengals and the Titans is coming up. For Dan Horde, Dave Lapham, Jeff Hobson, and our entire crew, I'm Marissa Contepelli. We'll see you next week. Bengals Weekly was brought to you by Alta Fiber. Proud to be the official internet provider of the Cincinnati Bengals. Paycor, proud to be the official HR software provider of the Cincinnati Bengals. And Kettering Health, official healthcare provider of the Cincinnati Bengals.